Hi friends, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin' and I am excited that you're here with me today. We are going to be talking about some beginner card making stuff today. And I just, you know, if you're not new around here or you're not a beginning card maker, I just wanna encourage you to stick around because there might be something I share that you still learn about or didn't know about. So before we get started, this video is about the best beginner handmade card designs. However, I wanted to really kind of go over just a few basic beginner things in case there's a brand new person to card making watching this video. So here's a couple things that you need to know. Number one is you really need a high quality cardstock. If you're going to stamp on cardstock, your cardstock needs to be a good quality cardstock. There's lots out there from all kinds of different companies. This particular cardstock I'm about to use is from Stampin' Up. It's their basic white thick cardstock. I will link to all of the products that I use today so that you can grab those if you want to. But you could use Nina Solar White cardstock. You can use any kind you want. But what I'm gonna say to you is, I have had more than one person say to me, well, my markers are bleeding or my stamp images are, are bleeding out and they don't look right and they're not nice lines and all that. It's your cardstock. 99.9% .9 of the time, it is your cardstock. You cannot go to Walmart or any other big box store, purchase cheap cardstock and have it work for stamping. It will not work. It's you're gonna have a subpar product in the end. And why spend your time, money, and efforts creating something that then is not going to give you a beautiful result? So invest in cardstock, really important. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need is some sort of paper trimmer. Now this is the one from Stampin' Up. There's a new one on the market from Tim Holtz that's great, Fiskars has them. But this one is like, a, it. the arm comes out. Lots of them do this. This isn't like special to Stampin' Up. This one has a scoring blade and a cutting blade. You do have to replace the blades ever so often. I'm gonna zoom out here for a second. All right, you do have to replace blades ever so often, but you need a decent trimmer because this is how you get the nice straight lines when you're making cards. I would re recommend investing in some sort of bone folder. There are, this, this one's from Stampin' Up. It is a real bone bone folder, but they make them that are like Teflon and different. I think it's Teflon. That's not right. Is that right? I don't know. They, they make different types. So all I'm saying is you these are handy to have if you are a card maker. Is it absolutely necessary right out the gate? No, but it is definitely something you wanna put at the top of your list. Okay, another thing is having high quality scissors. Um, these again from Stampin' Up, and these are called their paper snips. They're really, really sharp. However, I will tell you, they, they're not great for a really sticky adhesive because stuff sticks to them. So there are scissors on the market that have like a coating so that if you're cutting through something sticky, it won't stick to them. But these are super sharp and super good for fussy cutting and stuff like that. Okay, and then um, adhesive. You need a good adhesive. So I prefer to use the Precision Glue Press. It's a bottle full of glue. You pull this little handle, it disperses, dispenses the glue and it sits in this caddy like this and it's always on your desk ready to go. There's lots of different adhesives on the market, but you want to use a high quality adhesive that is made specifically for paper crafting. So don't use Elmer's glue because you're going to get all this like ripply, you know, effect on your cards and you don't want that. You want a glue that's specifically designed for card making, or you can use tape runners. So I have this thing that is um, from Amazon. I will link to it as well. All the products I'm gonna link to over on my blog. This is an advanced tape glider or ATG gun is what a lot of people call this. And inside of here is just all of the adhesive. It comes on this huge roll and it's very cost effective to use one of these. Um, you can buy huge packs of the adhesive from Amazon. 
And like I said, this is really cost effective if you're mass producing, especially. So when I'm making Christmas cards or cards for customers or things like that, where I'm mass producing lots and lots and lots of cards, I will use this because it's very cost effective. Um, it is bulky though, as you can see, like it's big, it's bulky. So if that's not something you like, there are smaller um, tape runners that you can use that are on the market. Okay. So that's like the super most basic you could get with card making. The only other thing would be a quality ink. So when we talk about inks, there's so many different inks on the market. There's reactive inks, there's dye inks, there's um, distress oxide inks that are like pigment based. There's stays on ink, which is pigment based. So if you're new, it can get really overwhelming really quick. So here's my suggestion. Get a good black ink pad. This one is one that I really, really like. It's by Hero Arts. It's called their Intensified Black Ink. It is a alcohol marker friendly ink. So if you want to start doing alcohol markers, you can do that. It is also waterproof for water coloring. So this is a hybrid ink. So it's acid free and archival. So that's something you always want to look for with your card making and scrapbooking products. It's fade and smear resistant. Although I will tell you it does smear when you, if you stamp it multiple times, but you just got to let it dry just for a little bit. Waterproof for watercolor and markers dries permanently and quickly on most papers, raised pad surface inks, stamp, any size stamp. So, this is just an all around great ink pad. I really, really like it. So this is a great one to have in your arsenal. We are gonna use this one today. Okay, so that's like your super beginner, like tools outside of the stamps. So now let's talk really quick about stamps and how we get the ink to the paper. This is a new stamp set from Stampin' Up that I'm gonna use today because I feel like that this is a really good beginner stamp set. Now, you'll see here that this comes with, you can buy this in a bundle and it comes with dies. However, I'm gonna tell you that dies are not really beginner items because you have to have a machine to use the dies, but you can buy just the stamp set. I love a stamp set like this because I feel like it's really versatile it allows you to use lots of different techniques and it's beautiful. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things today with this stamp set that where you can really get a range of ideas and stuff. We probably won't use the dies. We might use them at the end, I'm not sure, but um, the dies are definitely like intermediate you know, once you've kind of gotten into card making and you're deciding like, hey, I really wanna keep doing this, then you would wanna invest in a die cutting machine and you would use dies. So I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna bring in a couple of things that I wanna talk about for, again, that beginner card maker. <clears throat> now, if you're brand, brand, brand new and you don't want a big investment, you can purchase clear blocks. Clear blocks are something that you're gonna use to stamp most stamps now don't come on wood blocks anymore. They either come like this or they come in a photopolymer form. So this is sticky and it will stick right to your clear block and then you can stamp with this, okay? The thing is you have to have lots of different sizes of these because obviously this is not going to fit on that clear block. So you need to have a variety of sizes of clear blocks for stamping. The fix to that, an option, would be to purchase a MISTI tool. A MISTI tool is a stamp positioning tool that allows you to put either red rubber stamps or photopolymer stamps on this plate, shut the door, and stamp, okay? And I'm going to show you how to use that today, but you just remove like this little black foam piece and then I'm able to use an image like this that is on red rubber. If I'm using photopolymer, I wanna put this here. The Misty comes with a magnet and that holds your card stock in place and it holds your pads in place so that you can re-stamp multiple times in the same spot. If you have a mini Misty like this one, you basically don't need a clear block. I mean, 
There are a few occasions where a clear block comes in handy, but I'm just saying a stamp positioning tool pretty much takes the place of needing anything else. So it is an upfront investment, but in the long run, I feel like it's less expensive. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, let's get started. Uh, enough chitter chatter about all the basics. And if you are brand new to card making, please drop me a comment below this video and let me know because we want to welcome you to our community, A. And B, um, if you have any questions, not only myself, but all my friends here on YouTube that watch my videos regularly, we'll all be able to help you. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Or even if you're not new, but you saw something new today, please ask. Okay, so normally I have my card base all cut and prepped for you, but not today. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So we have our trimmer, and I'm gonna line my card stock up at four and a quarter. So all card stock bases are eight and a half, well, if you buy card stock that's eight and a half by 11, if you're in the United States, that's the size your card stock is. If you're outside the United States, it's different. So in the US, it's eight and a half by 11. So if you cut it in half this way, you get two cards out of it. If you cut it in half this way, you get two cards out of it. Those cards end up being four and a quarter by five and a half, and they are what we call an A2 size card, okay? So today I wanna make my card vertical. So I'm gonna cut, or hot dog style, I'm gonna cut at the four and a quarter mark. And then I like to personally score my card bases. So I'm gonna turn this card base, line it up at five and a half. And I'm going to use the scoring tool here and score my card base, okay? So in most of my videos, this part's already done. You never see it on film, but I wanted to show you in case you're new. The second tip I have, or not second, I've given you many tips, but another tip I have for you is when you're new, you might not know which way to fold your cardstock. And you might be thinking right now, like, does it really matter? Yes, it actually does. It matters. So whichever side is the bump side. So I scored here, which debossed the paper here, and it embossed the paper on this side. So this side of the paper where it's a bump up, is actually has fibers broken down so it is easier to fold your cardstock into the bump the direction of the bump away from the deboss and then i take my bone folder and i go along the edge and it makes this really nice seal okay like it's got a really nice edge now there's no tearing or bumps or anything along the top and that really is due to the direction that you fold now, just to illustrate this for you, I'm gonna take this second piece of cardstock, and this is gonna be our sacrificial lamb, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but instead of folding towards the bump, I'm gonna fold away from it. So I'm folding away from it, and you're gonna see, it's not a huge difference. I don't even know if you can see it on camera, but there is a difference here. You can see there's just a little bit of bumping. And then the other thing is where I cut, the, the, the cut piece kind of folds up, where when you fold it in the opposite direction, it goes away and it looks very smooth. So that's just a little tip, hints and tips. Okay, now let's talk about beginner card designs. My very favorite beginner card design is to do to start with your basic four and a quarter by five and a half card base. Add in a four by five and a quarter piece of solid card stock, which is in a different color, but I'm going to show you how to get around that if you don't have any colors. And then add an additional three and three quarters by five inch piece of card stock to stamp on. So let's do that. I'm going to take my one that we sacrificed here and I'm gonna cut this at five inches by three and three quarters. And this is like the most basic go-to card design ever, okay? And then I'm going to grab a piece of black cardstock, which by the way, I would highly recommend always having a white and a black cardstock on hand. I think those two are gonna get you everywhere you need to go. 
in the very beginning. Now I'm going to cut at four inches by five and a quarter. So all I'm doing here is I'm stepping my cardstock sizes down by a quarter of an inch. By the way, I don't want you to have any shame over this in case this is you. If you don't understand how to read a ruler, a lot of people don't, <laughs> believe it or not. There's a lot of people that do not understand how to read measurements or, or do measurements. If that's you, I have a video teaching you how to read a ruler. So I will link that video here on screen because it is a problem if you are trying to make cards with really good craftsmanship. So each piece of this cardstock is, is shrinking by a quarter of an inch. So we've got our card base. This is the one that opens. This is our card base, which is what card makers refer to as the base of their card. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. Then we have our layer that is four by five and a quarter. And then we have our last layer, which is three and three quarters by five. So each piece is stepping down by a quarter of an inch. Now for simplicity, because remember we're doing a very basic card maker design today. Um, this is one of them. I'm gonna show you more than one. We're gonna take our layer and pop it into the misty. When you put this in the misty, you want to push it up against this little wall. There's just a little lip right here, and you want to push your cardstock up against those lips, like up against the side wall and the bottom wall. Then you want to take your magnet and just place it on top. This holds everything in place. This little grid you see here is a sticky mat. For this particular thing I'm doing, a sticky mat is not needed. I just have it in there a lot of the time for different reasons. That is something you can pick up and they come in a pack of three. Again, I am going to link to all of this stuff on my blog. In the description box below this video, there's a link that says um, supplies, information, things like that. Click that link. It'll take you to my blog and over there you'll see all the products. Okay, now we got our black ink that we're going to use. And I've got my go-to stamp set here. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just, oh, you know what? I need to get rid of my little black foam because this stamp is red rubber. So it's thicker than a photopolymer. So we're gonna put this down and I'm gonna put my magnet back in place. And I wanna use this little sentiment that says, thank you so much. So I'm going to place it just like this, but I'm gonna stamp it after I stamp this just to make sure I get everything how I want it. You just close the lid, that picks up your image. And then I'm gonna ink up this stamp. Now this stamp is brand new to me and it's never been used. So sometimes you don't get the best image right out the gate, okay? That's totally normal. And that was pretty good, but I'm gonna go over it one more time. And here is the beauty of using the Misty. When you use the Misty or a stamp positioning tool, you can stamp multiple times in the exact same place and your image just gets crisper and darker. So here I've got my flowers and they are all stamped and good to go. So I can put this right back down. Let's say I missed a spot and I realized it after I picked it up. That's the beauty of putting it up against this lip. So I can put it right back down. I can ink my stamp up again, close this down, stamp again, no problem. Now to clean this, stamp and you always want to clean your stamps after you use them you can either use a scrubbing tool like i have i've got there's multiple ways you can do this i have a stamp and scrubber i have mist here i spray one side now it's nice and wet i flip this over scrub it clean and then dry it so there's a wet side and a dry side and now my stamp is perfectly clean, ready to go back into the box. 
I always clean my stamps after I use them because it helps them live longer and not have problems. All right, so now I have my little sentiment and I'm just gonna add it right here at the bottom of this image. And the cool thing about this is there is a grid on the window that shuts it down the plate. So I can kind of make sure that everything's nice and straight before I stamp it. And then I'm gonna stamp and it looks great. And I wanna do it again to get it even nicer, crisper image. And I've stamped again. And I'm gonna do it one more time actually. And I'm not pushing super hard. Okay, I'm just kind of like kissing the stamp to the paper and I'm not putting a whole bunch of pressure on it. I don't want my nail polish to get on this cardstock. So I'm gonna grab my scissors and just kind of lift up. There we go. Okay, so now the next step is to just glue it all together. We're not even gonna color this. We're just gonna leave it exactly as it is. And this would be an incredibly simple, be very beginner card, okay? You're just stamping a really pretty image in black and you're doing it on white. So you've got that black and white look. And then stamping a sentiment and you've made a beautiful card. This card could be given for so many things as a, a beautiful thank you card. And this is my go-to easiest beginner card design there is, which is stepping each layer down by a quarter of an inch, stamping a beautiful image that's kind of tall along with a sentiment and you're done. And you've got a perfect, beautiful beginner card. Now to step this card up, you can color the flowers, you can add sequins, you could add dash lines on the black using some gel, a gel pen. There's lots of things you can do to step this up, but this is a fantastic beginner card design. I'm gonna show you a couple of other samples of cards I made using this kind of same feel with just maybe a little bit of color or other options. Okay, so here I have sped up the video and we're doing a little voiceover because I just wanted to show you some alternative ways to color these and things you can do. So here I'm using a blending brush from Altenew to color these flowers with just ink blending and it goes outside the line, it's kind of messy, not a big deal. Then I grabbed my Prisma color pencils. You don't have to have Prisma color pencils. You could totally use just Crayolas. Um, I even thought about busting out my old crayon set and coloring these. You could stamp stuff like this for kids and then let them color it in. I just wanted to show you some alternative ways. If you don't have alcohol markers, you don't want to make that investment. Um, you don't have watercolors yet. Again, this video is geared for a beginner. So I didn't want to do anything that was too crazy um, because, you know, ultimately a beginner is only going to have a set amount of products. One of the things I always suggest new stampers to do is just to invest in some of their favorite ink colors. Uh, like I've done here, I'm, I'm sharing some of my very favorite ink colors. I love pinks, oranges, yellows, bright colors. That's really my jam. So if you're a jewel tones person, buy some jewel tone colors. If you're bright, br you know, buy some bright. If you like subtle, soft colors, pastels, buy some of those. So on those previous cards that I just showed you, I just put some solid cardstock behind them. I'll show them to you here in just a minute. So these are how these cards are all gonna look. And now I have this really cute little set of four. I could tie a ribbon around these and give these as a gift with envelopes. Um, and then these ones here, I put the solid cardstock behind each one and it matches the color of the zinnia. So, you know, these were super simple, like all of them, eight cards in no time at all, very simple, all one layer nothing extravagant, 
but they're beautiful. And I would feel very good about giving one of these cards to anybody. In fact, I think I'm personally going to save these cards and use them to put in uh, my daughter's thank you gifts for when she sells her livestock at the fair. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. The links below the video will take you to the supply list and I'll catch you next time. Hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.